I just I, I can't get my head around how only two thirds of our senior management can do that. I'd like like your your understanding of why they didn't do that, whether that was just an inability or uh, a disinterest. Um, I'd like to. I mean, again, I'm concerned that the information we've just got from you is that we are again missing deadlines. That completion date at the end of June. We are approaching the end of July. No, mid July now, and still haven't done that. And I, it just concerns me that we're going to be parroting the same thing from the last three sets of meetings. And I wonder if it's just largely redundant. Um, and a question I'd like to ask that as well. Do we know of anyone that has left the council during that period whilst awaiting a, an appraisal? Um, and how do you think that might have affected them if that's the case? Thank you. Um, in terms of the, the first issue, uh, the, the fact that um, senior managers have not uh, reached the target last year and are actually behind on the deadline this year, um, I, I obviously, you know, th this is a significant issue, and it's an issue that's been raised obviously through our management team and through our department and management teams. Um, I've said uh, the, the uh, strategic directors have a list of managers and I'll follow that up through their management teams in terms of ensuring that this happens, but clearly it is an issue and does have to be addressed. And as to why, I think there's a whole variety of different reasons why. Managers will talk about capacity, they will talk about restructure over the last year, where we, you know, we, we've lost significant numbers of staff and their role in that restructuring, in holding consultation meetings with staff, and all of those issues. We have reaffirmed the fact that performance appraisal is basic good practice, basic management. Um, certainly from, from my position, that, that's constantly the message that, that, that I'm um, talking to managers around. So I think there's a variety of reasons why they, they haven't been completed, um, capacity being one of them, but certainly there is a commitment to following this through and all the strategic directors who are talking to their DMTs and their senior managers about making this happen. Um, in terms of the um, follow-up question around, um, did we know that anyone had left the castle by awaiting appraisal? Um, through remodelling, we've, we've lost approximately 300 staff over the last year, um, and we able to redeploy a number of staff who actually chose to be redeployed rather than leave on a voluntary basis with a very small number of staff choosing not to take redeployment opportunities. But there will be a number of those who didn't receive an appraisal, yes. I couldn't say that name. Just a supplementary to that, please, Chair. Um, uh, one of the questions I have asked is how does that might affect them? Uh, which I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on. But do, like a commitment from you really, do we need to revise the targets for this year? Or are we going to improve and, and hit that 80%? Because I'd like us to work towards honest targets then really, because otherwise if I'm coming back here in a year's time again, another bad, a bad year, I don't want that really. So what do you think? Um, in, in terms of, sorry, the first question about you know, how they have affected staff, I think it's obviously quite difficult to say. Um, in terms of those staff that uh, we seem to redeploy, uh, we simply spent a lot of time with those staff talking about their skills, talking about the transferable skills and supporting them to get other jobs. So if they haven't had the support of the work with them before the appraisal, we certainly put support in in terms of their employees and their opportunity to look for other, other employment. Uh, for the volunteers, uh, there is a change support programme that again looks at skills transfer, should they be looking for other work or to move into to voluntary work. So we seek to, to uh, support them in terms of moving on, in terms of the next stage of their lives. Um, in terms of the revised target, I think it's an interesting question, and um, I, I'm not sure I have a ready answer, uh, because actually there was a discussion through the, the senior management teams whether the target should be re revised from last year for this year. I think that actually to, to lower the target would, would be a shame. Um, Discussions we had today with one of the management teams was around sort of the pace of delivering this across a large organisation. We wanted to keep a pace so that we could actually try and keep an eye on tracking that, but also we practice would say that we come back and have a six month review. And actually, if, you, if it's going across the year, you start to sort of bump up what's the difference between performance appraisal and the six month review and, and following through. But perhaps I just reflect on that and taking that back and having some discussion back with the senior management team. I just put one on there. In terms of the directors, I think it's important now, now we've got the new council plan out to me, there must be an increased drive to come and meet staff at, at the appraisals. I mean, Chris is reporting the stats that come back from directors. It's that we hold them up, that we manage the organisation to speak to the staff. And if you get across the council, which we're going to go in the next few years, that's important to have those meetings. So it's 
instead of, yes, it might be good to reduce the target, but I think we should attain for the higher target. We should be speaking to our staff on a regular basis. We should be having the approach. And that's the message I'll be saying within this direction. And I'm sure that's the message being portrayed by the public's chief director.
I say we are concerned because actually, if we were talking about a new plan, and I think Tom hits the nail on the head, the drive of the new plan and achieving it is that it becomes a target they want to phrase it, measured against that plan. And if that's not in as quick as we can, then we'll go back to doing what we normally do because the guidance isn't there. So the idea is that you know, we can raise the profile of this issue to cabinet level, give you a bit more clout for you, hit them. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, so is that a possibility? Well, we, we can't um, ask that all concerns are raised with the city management. We have to follow, are we asking Paul to you class that as a process of the culture change then? and, and the, the moving forward, the new, the new way of working? Can we see that we ask for our concerns to be as close to yeah. senior management? Yeah. Yeah. Just picking up on what Steve said, that a resolution of this type of committee that we can actually
which enables mothers, fathers, and partners with doctors to choose how to share the time off from work for their child is born on this adoption. The act and regulations um, enable mothers or doctors to commit to end their maternity and pay at future date and share the untaken balance of leave and pay as shared parental leave with their partner. It is designed to give more flexibility in how the uh, care of the leave is taken and how the care of the child in the first year um, is, is managed following their adoption and parents will be able to share the part of the leave. Council has implemented shared parental leave as part of the existing policy framework. The guidance and attitudes have been developed and will be available on the council's internet. In terms of training, fire managers will receive training on managing discipline issues as part of the Government Management Development Programme. There will also be specific training for investigator officers. A new e learning module will be developed and updated guidance will be available on the council's internet. The changes to parental leave do not require training as such, all relevant information and procedures will be on the council's internet. Thank you, Chair, for taking any questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, I know that everyone else has received a, a letter to my friend, as you said, I just wanted to get some clarity on whether what they've stated in this letter is actually correct about the reports going from the Chief Executive
Tam jest kraj, który nie wiem, że jakby te jakieś problemy, tylko bo się tak tak nie wiem, że zarabia, jak jest tego, że on jest inczą, bo ten wojsk jest tego, że jest co mam zdać. Take the level of the councillors out above, look down. Is it not the same legally as every other business? So I can't understand why the process isn't already in place. To make sure that it's that. Well, just the no, my, my point on that one is, is the level of appeal, is the ability to appeal. If you bring in members or councillors too early in the process, then there's no way to appeal to. So that was one of the reasons why it was amended. Yeah, just in terms of clarity, sorry, just in terms of clarity of the appeal, um, the right to an appeal is a fundamental employment right. It's enshrined in a public law and it has guidance. Every policy has a right to appeal, a process has a right to appeal, you have a right to appeal against a um, disciplinary warning or you have a right to appeal as a grievance. Um, but the appeals now, since 2013, the council decision, is all appeals below chief officer level are um, delegated to the head of paid service, the chief executive, the chief executive and head of paid service. The head of paid service um, um, executes that through the street directors chairing the appeals panels with two heads of service and with HR and legal advice. Um, any of disciplinary appeals or grievance appeals at chief officer level is the incumbent of the Women's Committee. So the appeal process is, is there within the, the policies, it meets the employment practice, it's a question of who carries out the appeals and who leads the appeals. The decision was made back in 2013. The unions retained a principled objection to that process. Um, and I would have some comments as well on the letter when the chair feels that she would like to move and uh, obviously, the, um, I received the uh, copy of the letter that you received as members just before the committee, and obviously, I haven't had a chance to prepare a detailed response. Um, the principal objection by the trade unions to the officer appeals process has been um, and is in the report. So, we have noted that principled um, objection. 
Um, it's worth saying that the need for trade unions, I need for trade unions for an to JCC every three weeks. The leader meets them every six weeks. At no stage have the trade unions ever raised any concerns around the quality or the issues around the operation and um, handling of the meals at the officer level. At no stage have the trade unions raised any issues through the consultation or through any of those meetings around the reporting on those issues. So clearly, I was surprised to see that tonight because we have been through a consultation process with the trade unions and these issues have not been raised. But clearly, it's a matter for the committee how you wish to take it. Christina? Yeah, I don't know if I'm misunderstanding this letter because I felt the second paragraph was all about reporting back on outcomes, not individual outcomes, but on trends, etc. And I think they're asking where, where were they reported to? Um, and who, which, which group? So presumably you're doing what it says and you're doing the reporting reports. So who is it that you report them to and which group of councillors get them? Jeff, I think what I just need to do is to check the first council resolution to be clear exactly what was said so that I can respond back to all those that are circulated by email in response to that specific issue. Could we just give us a bit more Okay, I think we're happy to uh, agree the recommendation and additionally I think that we've noted these concerns and that we're going to raise surges to um, contact us and, and, and produce uh, what we call to the requested.